The Mariners win and come from behind to beat the San Francisco Giants in 10 innings in Dan Wilson's first ever managerial game with the Seattle Mariners. This is the NW Sportscast post game show. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. The Mariners with a huge come from behind victory, not just for the Mariners, but also for Dan Wilson. It was looking pretty bleak at the start. A 5-1 deficit, but then the huge eighth inning, which I believe it was five or six straight base hits, which led the come-from-behind runner to score all the way from, you know, fourth on deck. It was absolutely ridiculous. Then Julio Rodriguez obviously ends up striking out. Cal Raleigh with a little blue pop-up, and Randy Rosarena also. So those three guys do not come up big, but you know who does? It's Andres Munoz, who comes up absolutely massive. He does it once again. He's back on track after having a couple of rough outings, let's be honest. With the, against the Dodgers, excuse me, he pretty much sold that game. And before that, he also let up a few runs against the Tigers. But now it looks like he is indeed back. Colin Snyder also with the huge 10th inning after the Mariners were unable to score. And then... The bottom of the 10th inning, Leo Rivas facing an 0-2 count is able to battle back and with a runner on third base in Dylan Moore who is still surprisingly fast given how old he is right now in his MLB career is able to nag third base and Leo Rivas kind of is able to shorten up his uh, batting stance, you know, choke up on the bat and just poke one into center field for the win. So what a game this was for the Seattle Mariners. A come from behind win, and it's huge not only because of the Astros lost, but because this really is it. The Mariners, it's go time. I've talked about it once, I'll talk about it again. There is no more waiting for the Mariners. This is it. If the Mariners want a chance to make the playoffs, this is the moment the Mariners have to seize, especially when the Astros lose. But every game is must win. And you know what I love about what Dan Wilson did? in his very first manager game, is he was not timid. He was not holding back. He threw out his big guns. Andres Munoz in the ninth inning and Colin Snyder in the 10th inning, your arguable two best relief pitchers. When there's a chance to win a ball game, Dan Wilson said, let's go win this freaking ball game, and that's what he did. The Mariners are now back above 500. They send the Giants to 500, who are now 65 and 65. The Mariners are 65 and 64. Let's go and see the player stats of today's game. Because to be honest, at the very start of the game, it was looking very bleak. But the Mariners started to turn it on. Luke Rayleigh, he goes two for three, including the bloop single, which was absolutely huge in the bottom of the eighth. And the big home run to score a couple. Julio Rodriguez, unfortunately, goes 0 for once again. Man, it has been so frustrating to watch Julio. He does pick up a couple of walks, but it has been... A terrible season for Julio Rodriguez. I'm back in the dorm room right now. And that's why the setup looks a little bit different. And I remember listening to various Mariners podcasts right before I left in uh, mid-April. And one of them included Julio Rodriguez um, anecdote. And it pretty much said Julio's looking forward to bounce back from a down sophomore season. But now it's looking like last year was maybe Julio's, not his peak necessarily, but one of Julio's better years. And maybe this is just what we've come accustomed to. So Julio Rodriguez, unfortunately, has just been really bad with the Mariners, but I'll give him credit where credit is due. A huge catch in the 10th inning to keep the runner over at second base. A diving play in his first game back in center field. Absolutely electric stuff defensively for Julio. Cal Raleigh. He also goes over three, but also picks up a couple walks. But he's been pretty good over the last month or two. Pretty much our only hitter. So let's give him some grace. Also, he had a sick play from the catcher position. A little foul ball that landed to the left side of the chalk. And Cal Raleigh had a great jump on it and made a nice athletic play. And the other catcher, Dan Wilson, was loving it. And that's uh, you know happy to see that as well. Randy Rosarena, man. Has he been struggling? And he's been struggling mightily. 0 for 5. What is happening with Randy Rosarena? Maybe this is the Randy that we've all come to love. Super hot, super cold. There is no in-between. 
I made a whole video on Randy Rosarena, why I thought he's going to be better than what people even expected. Go check that out if you want. But so far, that is not coming to fruition. Randy Rosarena, super good in the first couple of weeks with the Mariners. Since then, has been piss poor. Jorge Polanco, he comes in and goes one for four. Mitch Hanniger, two for five. And Hanniger's been kind of turning it on, especially since the All-Star break. Turning it on is hitting 230. But still, compared to what Mitch Hanniger was doing in the first half of the year, He's pretty much secured himself a roster spot from here on out, and before we were thinking about DFA and Mitch Hanniger, so that's good to see. Dominic Canzone, he goes 0 for 2. Justin Turner, he goes 1 for 2 with a walk and an RBI, and it was a huge base hit, so great for JT. I was pumping my fist, screaming and yelling when Justin Turner had that base hit into right field. That was the... The turning point in this game was Justin Turner being able to come up big, and he was able to do just that. Dylan Moore was then the pinch runner. He stole third base, and then Josh Rojas. He was 0 for 4, but then when he needed the most, Rojas comes up huge, and he gets a huge base hit. You love to see it. Rojas was one of our best players at the start of the year and has fallen off a cliff. Now all of a sudden, the Mariners are going to need to look at replacing him at third base very soon, soon as in next season, of course. But right now, Josh Rojas is your answer at third base. So he has to play well for the Mariners to make the playoffs. That's about it. Josh Rojas is going to be one of those integral guys where he has to play better. And we've seen the ceiling of Josh Rojas, and it's a top 10 third baseman. But we've also seen the floor, and that is he should be out of the league. And right now, the latter has occurred a lot more often, but Rojas with a huge base hit tonight. Hopefully, that is the sign that things are starting to turn around. And then Leo Rivas. What can I say about Leo Rivas? He goes two for four, and for someone who I've seen play a lot of games over in Tacoma, it is great to see Leo Rivas being able to meaningfully contribute to this ball club. He goes two for four tonight. He picks up a walk, and he walks it off. Leo Rivas is able to battle from an 0-2 count, chokes up in the bat, and pokes one into center field. Great stuff from Leo Rivas. Now let's look at the pitching side. Luis Castillo, he goes six innings pitched. He gives up five earned runs. Not super sharp from Castillo, and he hasn't been over the last few outings. But then the bullpen is absolutely electric. Taylor, he gives up no earned runs in an inning. And then Gabe Spire, just called up from AAA Tacoma, was one of the best relievers the Mariners had last year. Since then, he's been you know, up and down between AAA and Seattle has been battling some injuries, but he looked pretty good today. So that would be great to see if Gabe Spire could return to the 2023 version of what we got last year. Andres Munoz, he comes in. I've already talked about him. Strikes out the side in the ninth inning. And then Colin Snyder, one of the best players for the Mariners. He has two Ks. Gives up just the one walk on one inning of work. Colin Snyder, what more can you say? Well, the Mariners have two more against the San Francisco Giants at home. And it's go time, like I said. It is lock-in time, especially with the Astros still facing the Orioles. Oreos. Oreos? Wow, it's it's late over here. 1 30 a.m. East Coast time. The Orioles. Um, and the official standings right now are the Astros are four and a half up on the Mariners. And four and a half is it very hard to do, especially with the amount of time the Mariners have to do it? Yes, but is it impossible? Absolutely not. The Mariners need to turn it on. And this is a momentum-changing game. Mark my words, momentum changer tonight. Friday, August 23rd, Saturday, August 24th for me. But it's a momentum-changing day. And you know why? It's because the Mariners showed some fight. And that's something they haven't shown all season long. I'm just going to say, I have not seen the fight that the Mariners showed today that I've really seen all season long. Is that because of Dan Wilson? Probably not, but is it because Scott Service got fired and those two those those are two separate things? I think so. I think Scott Service getting fired really kind of lit a fire under some people, especially the players. And they said, wow, 
Scott Service, someone that we really admire, someone that we love, Scott Service was loved by all his players, is fired because of us. And that sentiment, I think, really changes a ball player's perspective and says it's, it's go time. My manager got fired because of me. And that thought and that belief, I think, made those guys not give up in the eighth inning. Because I've seen a Mariner team this year where you're down 5-1 in the eighth inning. It's pretty much wraps, especially because they left a few guys on base in the seventh inning. Clean that up. This baseball game is over. But the Mariners did not do that today. They absolutely respond when they need to the most. They link up some base hits, and that's without Julio really contributing. That's without Cal Raleigh contributing. That's with Luis Castillo having a below average start. So the Mariners, they still have an opportunity here, folks. Um, They have two more against the Giants, and those are, once again, I said pretty much must win. I said the Mariners' season is pretty much over if they don't sweep the Giants, and I mean it. If they lose tomorrow... I'm still in, I think the season's over mode. But if they win tomorrow, win Sunday, then all of a sudden you have a chance. And let's look at who the Mariners are playing after that. It's escaping my mind. Um, Let's see. So obviously the Mariners win today. Then they play the Giants for two more. And then they play, who do they play? I know they play the A's in there somewhere. I'm not sure why I can't get that <laughs> can't get that you guys that information right now. Um, let's look at this Mariners schedule. Sorry, I'm usually more prepared than this, guys. I'm a little a little outdated in my new setup. All right, so the Mariners schedule they played the Giants for a couple, and then they play the Rays for three, and that's super winnable. And then they play the Angels for three, and then the A's for four. So within the next 12 games, you play three pretty bad teams. I want to say the Giants are bad; they're at 500, but they're not great. In those 12 games, you got to go 9 and 3, 10 and 2. Uh, yeah, 9 and 3 honestly might not be enough. 10 and 2 is kind of what I'm looking at. I'll afford two losses. So that means you either have to sweep the Giants, the A's, or the Angels, or the Rays. So one of those teams you're going to have to sweep, and the rest you can win 3 of 4 or 2 of 3 against. But that's kind of where we're at with this baseball team. Not trying to get my hopes up. Not trying to get too optimistic. But I will say, this is a good start. Dan Wilson is showing us why he's a difference maker. Not necessarily, once again, not necessarily because of what he does differently than Scott Service, but because of the philosophy and the change that he comes in with compared to Scott Service. So that's about all I got, guys. This is the NW Sportscast. The Mariners aren't dead quite yet. They just sneak by, come back, and beat the Giants by a score of 6-5. to five. Thank you guys, everybody, so much for watching the NW Sportscast postgame show. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe on the video if you made it all the way to the end because you clearly liked it just a little bit. That's about all I got. This is Drew Alba saying so long, and as always, go Mariners.